This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to another Can Crushers. It's going to be one of those shows because Mark's had some drinks already and he's feeling great. Yeah. I'm excited for this show. In studio is the deer slaying, glorious guru, two in the pocket, and in his Home studio is the English professor, and I'm going to scream all day because I'm in a goddamn good mood. I really am. It's a drinking day. I'm not really one for Halloween. Nobody's home, so let's do this right today. Yeah, all right. You're like Vince McMahon back in the day. Welcome to Fan Crushers, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you're ugly enough, too. You don't need a mask for Halloween. He's got to get his Vince McMahon in every week anymore. Yeah. Every time. Oh, I'm sure his fucking name will come up a few times this podcast. <sighs> yeah. So, all right. My kids are trick-or-treating right now. Your kid's English professor just got back from a hell of a party. Yeah, my son got back from a hell of a party. My daughter just left for a party. So I had the house to myself a little bit. Um, And... It's been a cigar and beer kind of day. This day just couldn't possibly get any better. It, my kids, uh, my son had a blast. My daughter was excited to go to her party. We have a ton of candy. Um, the kids are over trick or treating. They're not into it anymore. They're 14 and 10. Um, so we're going to watch some movies. We have 160 pieces of candy. We'll eat some of it. I don't know what trick or treating is going to be like this year. So we'll see. If kids come to the door, they can have some of our candy. If not, we get 40 pieces a piece. That's amazing. I, I have a question for both of you, but Chad, you were kind of on the bubble if you were going to be able to record with us because we're kind of recording a little early so we can do stuff with the family. You were worried yesterday. You've been sucking ass in the woods. Yeah, I, I couldn't hit the broad side of a fucking barn if I was standing next to it. But? But I got lucky yesterday. Yesterday evening early, got a nice dough, and then this morning, uh, the good Lord smiled upon me, and I got uh, probably about a 240, 250 pound buck. Does that mean I get venison this year? Yes. Yeah. In a, in That's great, man. Congratulations. Thank it's, you. Uh, I saw the the buck. Uh, Chad showed us a picture. It's a beautiful animal. It's a it's great dead. catch. Good job, yeah. man. He's a he's an old guy. Um, don't know how much longer he would have survived. Not much, uh, not very long in the tooth, so to speak. Um, good harvest. Feel feel good about it. Very thankful. It'll how many more licenses you have left now for rifle season? I have three tags left. And do you muzzle load? No. You should start. No, it's too much work. Oh, all right. It's too much work and too fucking cold. Then it's yeah. You know what? <laughs> you know what I killed today? I killed a pack of gray wolves today. Wow. Oh, you bastard. A whole I'm pack. Send PETA on your ass. A whole pack of gray wolves when I was uh, hunting up in Alaska. Nice. Did you have a license? I did. It's called Hunter Call of the Wild. Ah, okay. My PS4 license. <laughs> Listeners, you'll not be surprised to know that I don't know the first thing muzzle load means. I don't. That's a Civil War type guns where you put the powder down the oh. thing and then the you were catch just, the ball. You were I was just a Civil War reenact. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know what a muzzle loader is, but what were you fucking packing in your Civil War reenactment? Their their AR fifteens they had. I was like an eighteen seventies, so post Civil War, uh, steel mill worker for a reenactment I was in. So it's not like I was. He didn't have Packing a gun. Muscles. He didn't have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 
well, you can tell Mark's had beers because this is going nowhere fast. But, no, we do have to simmer down. We have to simmer down. Um, the wrestling world this week uh, lost another legend. Um, I remember him growing up a lot, uh, part of the FBI. Uh, him and little Guido and ECW. FBI as in? Full-blooded full Italians. Okay. Yeah, right. not that I, I'm not full-blooded. He is. The English professor is. I am not. Half is pretty good, though, Mark. Yeah, I'm a half-blooded Italian. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember them causing havoc in ECW, and I love their shtick. I love their shtick. I do remember the Southern Boys as well. Um, guys who we're talking about, you guys know by now, Tracy Smothers. Um, he's battled for a while. And I'll let you guys talk about him. I had the chance to meet his daughter, Jessie. Uh, she has done some work with OVW. Um, she's on WOW Wow when um, they come back around. And she's kind of the Southern Belle thing. Um, she's, she's, a, she's a wonderful human being, a sweetheart. We talked a little bit. Um, actually saw her down at WrestleCade as well. So talked a little bit there with her. But uh, thoughts and prayers is uh, I, I'm the only one with one right in front of me. So for Tracy Smothers, cheers, guys. Yep. Uh, they were also known as the Young Pistols there for a little while in WCW. A uh, little bit more of a personal story, I guess. Mark, do you remember, I don't know how old, we were in college. Obviously, we were in college. My uncle, Joe, took us to wrestling in Brockway. Yes. And Tracy Smothers was the headliner. He was he was a heel. I don't remember that one. I remember no. going to it, but I don't remember him being right. there. Right. Uh, King Kong Bundy was there. But you'll remember this. Tracy Smothers just went ape shit on Pennsylvania and he pointed to you because you must have had like a Penn State shirt on and I had my pit shirt on and he goes Penn State sucks and I said yeah and he pointed to me and he goes the University of Pittsburgh sucks <laughs> oh, damn state sucks it was great it was great heat um yeah the young pistols were an awesome tag team so as you said you know it's a tough time for for Tracy Smothers family can Crusher sends its condolences. The wrestling world sends its condolences. Um, hopefully, he's uh, he's resting easy and not in any more pain. Yeah, he's. I I always remembered him and him and the Armstrongs uh, was the first think thought that come to my mind, and then his work in uh, oh uh, Smoky Mountain wrestling with Jim Cornette and. You know, regardless of what you think of Cornette, Jim was actually moved uh, to tears on hearing about Tracy passing away because he thought that highly of him. Uh, you know, known in the business as as a teacher, as somebody that was not... He was there, obviously, to earn a living and do as good as he could, but he wouldn't fuck people over. He would help people. And get them along, you know, help them along and everything. And uh, the one thing that come to my mind after I kind of ran through everything was uh, I could see Bullet Bob Armstrong and Brad Armstrong waiting at the gates there to greet them. And boy, you know, three redneck guys with so much, so much talent that. Uh, you know, there's the the wrestling federation in heaven's gotten some good Big people names. this year. Yeah. Um, Big and names. Tracy's, you know, Tracy's one of them. I, I like how you said, uh, I, both of you, I think, said this, that he was like a teacher. Um, he was a little, for the wrestling business, long in the tooth. As we're, That's going to be clearly the title of this long in the tooth. Um did, uh, I remember him like that in ECW. You know, he did his blood, he did stuff, but he was one of the, the elder statesmen there. And, you know, little Guido was really young into the business at that time. And he kind of took him under his wing. And you saw those guys go to Tracy in the ring, even when we weren't full marks that we are now and we were just fans. And 
you knew Tracy was doing something special with that locker room, even in ACW, John. I know you hated it, but you know that Tracy had his footstep. We talk about Dreamer and Taz and Sandman and Douglas all the time, but Tracy, I think, was a huge part of that just because he's been in the business for so long, and he kind of helped Heyman and everybody mold Mikey Whipwreck and Just Incredible and those, those guys. Yeah, that's great information, Mark. You're absolutely right. So, uh, Chad brought up another one. I did see it, and I kind of forgot because I just flew back from Alaska, like I said, to do this show. Um, Sean Connery passed away, too, at the age of 90. Uh, of course, it's not wrestling, but, man, those Jeopardies on... Uh, uh, Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yes. I love them. The, Rough. The well, your James, mother likes an air Trebek. The James Bond movies... Um, yeah. you know, a, a hell of an actor. Another one lived a good full life, 90 years old and, you know, died peacefully at home. He was in, uh, um, the untouchables along with Andy Garcia and Robert De Niro played Al Capone. Um, I saw that as a teenager and I enjoyed Sean Connery so much in that movie that I was actually cheering for the Irish. I know he's Scottish, but he played an Irish guy in the movie. I was cheering for the Irishman um, over the Italians. And I'm telling you, I got so pumped up in that scene where this guy sneaks in through the window to try to kill him with a knife. And Connery says, typical whoop. He brings a knife to a gunfight. That's still one of my favorite lines, despite the uh, obvious derogatory term. Um, that really got me pumped up, that particular movie. My favorite Saturday Night skit, uh, he, he did all those ones, you brought that one up, but the the subject on Jeopardy was the pen is mighty. Uh, he said the penis mighty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the show. Uh, the penis speaking of mighty. Speaking of penises, let's go, let's to, go to Hell, hell in a Cell! cell. <laughs> um... First of all, thank God I didn't watch this live. You two did. Good for you. Applause. Oof. And I got messages from both of you. I did at work. Um, somebody actually tried calling me at work, and I'm like, I'm at work. I can't answer the phone. Was that me yesterday? That was you all week. But ah, fuck you. I didn't call you all week. I didn't speak. I was shocked that they started with Roman and Uso. And there's a lot of banter. Uh, now, first you got to start. Come on, look, when I met when I messaged you, I was about I was in tears laughing at the pre-show because they had Jeff Jarrett. There. I didn't watch the pre-show. Thank Regar God. No, it was funny. Just Jarrett on there alone. You know, regardless of the issues that he's had, personal issues and stuff like that, the dude is still I, a student of the game. I you love know, Jeff. Mark Jarrett. has this absolute. I don't know what to put it collage, I guess, of Jeff Jarrett. Um, it's a painting but it somebody was, made for us. Yeah. yeah, It was funny. John, did you watch any of the pre-show? I did not. I didn't know Jeff Jarrett was there. Yeah, he, he was on the pre-show and he's he's sitting there and he's, he's just fucking giving it right back to Booker T and everything and then uh, uh, our truth comes out and Jarrett's like, Little Jimmy! Without fucking missing a beat, our truths like road dog. It was just, it was just <laughs> funny. You could see that Jarrett was happy. He looks good. Um, it, it was just their humor. But yes, Reigns. Uh, he's, and he's a good guy. He really is. And at the height of the Monday Night Wars, when he jumped ship, he dropped the belt to, to China and went to WCW. And I think it was in the Torch magazine. Vince McMahon said he can come back anytime he wants. He was one of the guys who fulfilled his obligations, who did business on his way out. Total pro. Total pro. Now, it's it's funny you bring this up, and I just read this. Uh, who did, I can't remember who it was. Was talk, It was Arne Anderson talking about it, saying about uh, Jarrett when he was in there and he was uh, the – co-champion with China, right? was it with the Intercontinental title, 
Jared's contract was actually up, and he was still a champion. And wow. what he what he did going into this pay per view, because Vince McMahon is really fucking famous for, and even to this day, I'll give you this much per year. He did this to Arn, Arn and Tully, and he's done it to others. But he'll say, "I'll guarantee you this much." But what he would do, he wouldn't give you that much. Well, I'll take care of you next year. Then I'll take care of you next year. And then when you finally say fuck it and leave. Then he gives you the money, and it kind of leaves a sour taste. Well, Jarrett kind of had, Arn talks how Jarrett was like, I'm going to fuck him over on this one. And they're going into that pay-per-view. They had put so much into it to building that match. He walked in without his bag, went to McMahon's offer and said, office and said, I want all my money that you owe me, or this fucking match ain't happening. Wow. McMahon was like, Supposedly, as Arn Arn tells it, you know, he was he was surprised and argued with him. Jared's like, I don't give a shit. I'm not under contract. Wow. And McMahon he actually uh, had to wire it to Jared's account before Jared would go out there, and he made sure Jared Jared's wife called him and said, Yeah, the money's in the account. Take it out. Take it out now. <laughs> and it was over. It was over $500,000. I need that. He went out, did the match, come back, grabbed his bag, and left. Wow. All right. Hell in a Cell. Roman and Uso. Like I said, I was shocked that it started first. I, I, some people think this is the greatest match this fucking year. I can't, I can't stand the match. It was spear, Superman punches, and chokeholds. That was it. But I will say, I love the storyline. I love the storyline. I love that the Wild Samoans were there. I, I love all of that. My big beef in this match is the referee was pandering for Uso to give up. Just give up, I'll ring the bell. It was like trying to have somebody wear a dress and go dance downtown at the courthouse, which is a guy or something, you know, or try to start a fight with pots and pans or something. I mean, I just don't understand that why the ref was pandering so much. Just ask. If he says no, all right, well, fuck it. Let him get beat up some more. He asked every second twice. <coughs> and It's too much. Yeah, it was overselling. Um, well, we're quoting famous actors, I'll throw out an Al Pacino line from Donnie Brasco uh, in regards to this match. Look at this fucking thing. A fucking insult. It, it's the worst match I've seen in 20 years, guys. It was the worst. They took naps in between moves. We've talked about Hulk Hogan, the three punches, big boot, leg drop. He could do other stuff. I don't know what else Roman can do. I have not seen him do anything in the last several years other than throw a punch at a spear. This is one of the worst matches I've seen in years, if not the worst I've ever seen. And I love the Usos. One other quick thing. We've talked about the often asked the legends. Who could have worked in your era or, or any era? And you hear names like Flair will say Undertaker could have worked in any time period. And I agree. The Usos as a tag team are one of my favorites. They could work in any era. This was, was it Jimmy Uso? Jay. Jay. This was Jay Uso's worst match. This was the shit, as Ole Anderson would say. Yeah, this, as Jim Cornette said, this was the drizzling shit. <laughs> um, this, it, it was bad. I, again, I like the storyline. But I don't mean to be rude, guys. He put fucking Roman put Jay in that that chokehold for like thirty seconds, and Jimmy's oh, I had to give up to save him. Fuck that! <gasps> let him get what? choked. Out. Let him get choked. Out. And why the hell is he going over there? Oh, okay, I give up. I give up. Let him go. Why not? Fucking punch Roman in the head. I or grab the chair that was two fucking feet from you and crack him in the head. That'll let him make him let fucking go of him. Is it the hell in a cell to prevent anybody from being able to get in? Anybody? 
the door was never locked in this match. You know how they bring out the 90-pound chain and they have to wrap it around six times that the only one that can rip it off is the Ultimate Warrior? It wasn't even locked this time! Yeah. And it's still red. We need to get rid of this red hell in the cell because it's uglier than Christ. And I'm not yeah. saying Christ is ugly, but I'm just saying that's what right. came out of my it's it expression. Was, yeah. Um, enough on that. Because there's more wrong Terrible. to talk about. Yeah. Um, the next two matches, we can go over real goddamn quick because this was a horrible pay-per-view. Thank God for one thing. And you guys will know where I, when I get there. Um, Elias and Hardy, it's just the rekindling of this feud. Elias got to sing a song that he was promoting for Monday night for his new album to come out. <sighs> Nothing. Oh, Smash oh. guitar and match over. And Elias is apparently not watch wrestling over the last couple of months to see that it was fucking Sheamus who hit him with the car and dumped beer all over Hardy, so Elias still has a fucking heart on thinking it was Hardy that ran him over. It's like, oh my god. Fucking really? I was hoping yeah. Jarrett would run out with a guitar and fucking whap both of them. And I love Elias. Yep, I was just going to say, I love Elias. He is one of the few people these days who can genuinely get heat. Um, he's good buddies with our good buddy Jimmy Nuts. And Jimmy Nuts is absolutely right. He's a freakish athlete. He's a big guy who can do small guy stuff. Um, this match, uh, I don't, and, and Jeff Hardy still has some gas in the tank. I think he's a really good athlete, but. I don't know who's booking this shit, man. There wasn't a moment where I felt like I was enthralled or even interested. Yep. Uh, Elias wins by DQ. Next match is Otis for against Miz for the contract. I put, thank God, we were right. By the way, let's just ru ruin the spoilers. Um, you lost. Me and John. Now, I, hold on. Before <laughs> we get into this shit. Okay, when we go, when these tournaments are going on in the AEW tournament, they made it. What are you uh, talking about? Now, just, just, I'm getting there. They made it a fact that if the guys went to a time limit draw, or we're a not there yet, or they went to a time limit draw, that they were both eliminated, right? Right. So you and John tied record wise. So, you guys are eliminated, and I remain the champion by default. You got, you were the only one that got one wrong. But you guys were, you guys got eliminated, so. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You might get a. This is fucking Bobby Heenan thinking here. You could get suspended for a week. Um, Tucker turns on Otis, and that's the story of this. Yeah, I, the whole lead up to this is one of the dumbest storylines with the court case. Otis could have just been like, look, I won this thing. I don't have to defend it against anybody. I'm going to cash it in right now. Let me go find a champion and beat him up and win. It just was the dumbest thing. It reeked of desperation to just get this thing off of him and get it on somebody that can maybe, I don't know, draw a dime like the Miz. Ugh. It's like anybody but the fucking Miz. I'm all right with it. Better and, than Otis. Yeah, better that's than not Otis. saying much. Who do you want Ali they to have? They could put it? it on. They could put it on fucking Jack Jock Sampson, and it'd be better than Otis. You fat bastard who don't doesn't answer my challenge. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad they got it off of Otis. I just I'm not enthralled by the Miz because they're not going to have the Miz beat Roman. Easy. They're not going to have the Miz beat uh, Orton. Know about that one, uh, and it's just like I, I'm sorry. I the the uh, just not the Miz. Definitely, I would have Roman. rather have seen him fucking. Definitely not Roman. He's on Raw for a reason. He's on Raw for a reason, and uh, I could see the Miz sniffing the title again. I hope briefly. Not. The only thing that saved this pay per view was Bailey and Sasha. Um, again, the women. They find different ways to use the cell. They're not going to throw you against it. They're not going to bloody you up. I actually like the, the the table up against it. I like the... I, I would have liked to see really what they were trying to do with the taped kendo sticks, but that went bad real quick. 
Um, they improvised, though. They did. I, I liked everything about this match. I, I really did. Uh, I, it's still... I see another match coming, and we'll get to that. Uh, these two are the best workers, I'm telling you. On this card, for sure, and in the women's division. Absolutely. This was five stars all the way. It was innovative. I believed they hated each other. They wanted to just terminate one another. Um, you say, Mark, they, they didn't use the cell. Obviously not in, in traditional terms. There were still some moments um, where Sasha hit like the double knees. What does she call that? Uh, Meteora. Meteora. Where the shit looked dangerous. Um, and there was an instance where Bailey kind of did a slingshot, um, maybe up against a chair in the corner. And I think she might've knocked Sasha out there for a little bit. Um, I, I often talk whenever there's a cage match, I go back to this cause I'm a total Mark, Brett and Owen, their goal was, we're not going to make this a bloodbath. We're going to use the cage in new and innovative ways. Um, uh, these two women blew that out of the water. They used the cage in new and innovative ways. But most importantly, they made me believe they hate each other and they just wanted to beat the shit out of each other. Terrific match. Start to finish. Five stars. No napping. I did a move. I'm going to try to beat you. Didn't work. I'm going to do something else. I'm going to try to beat you. It just it kept building and building and building. Very, very good. Great match. Shit just didn't look out of place, as we'll talk in the main event um about stuff they just they gelled so well together and that just shows you don't have to rehearse shit if you just know your opponent and you're you know familiar with them how well you can work together the thing that was the most brutal to me was when sasha put her put bailey's head in a chair and had the bank statement on and was kicking a fucking chair i'm like Oh, Jesus. I'm yeah. like, holy shit, fucking just tap before one of these shots go fucking wrong or something. Absolutely brutal, but that that was fucking awesome. Sasha has a title now as she won the match. Is this Sasha's time to hold a title more than 14 days? Are we going to get a legit, <laughs> and my air quotes are back, legit title run for this Poor woman. She's a seven-time champ now. Finally a grand champion and everything. Do we get a long length title? Reasonable. She'll be she'll defend at WrestleMania, my opinion. I hope. Otherwise They bury her. She she's just she's a joke. If if they don't, they just not that they haven't hadn't ruined her before with the shit, but if they do this again, uh, she's done. Uh, she's yeah. I, I, it's like putting. It's like unfortunately the what I'm seeing in the news, the push of fucking Lana. A a bigger uh, push for her and a title push for her, and I'm like, no. Why? Right. That would be if Bailey loses this on her first defense. Sasha or Sasha, sorry. Loses it back to Bailey on her first defense. That's that that is honestly where I'd put Sasha as far as her championships. Useless as tits on a boar hog. I killed a couple of those today too. Um, we're we're going to get to SmackDown, but just very quickly, I want to mention since we're talking about Sasha, um, and I've had a few drinks, you guys. I've had a few beers when she came out. Oh, I got uh, more on that too. I, I had to roll my tongue back in my mouth. Oh. Uh, I didn't, of course, I didn't watch the pre-show. Apparently, Ali and Retribution put some type of uh, challenge up against the Hurt Business. Bob takes on Slap Nuts. MVP says it's going to be a title shot. Who the fuck cares? Why are they having this? This match is only setting more up for the Survivor Series match that's going to happen between these guys. Yeah. And, and nobody cares. And I didn't get why they inserted a squash match on a pay-per-view. Didn't make sense. You want to drop a bombshell, make it worthwhile, you know, important people. Obviously, Bobby Lashley is, is a bit of a name. Slap nuts, isn't. But um, I, I didn't get why this was inserted just to be a quick squash. Made no sense. Uh, I thought my first thing was this was a come-down match. This was 
okay, people, go take a piss, go get something to eat, you know, go hook up for five minutes or so, whatever. That's about what this fucking match was. Um, it's horrible. And I found you know we're, through we've it talked legitimate. about we've talked about uh, uh, regulation or whatever their fucking name retribution. is retribution retribution <laughs> regulation. Beer's had so much in the show um, compared to coffee. Really Vince, <laughs> Vince McMahon has lost interest in the angle. Done. And they're saying that's why they're just getting buried. And it's like, motherfucker, they didn't get started. Ooh, they cut a couple of cables and beat some cable guys up in some pyro. You've had them get their asses handed to them. You have single-handedly ruined, uh, what was the, the guy from NXT? Dijakovic. Dijakovic. You've sing. You know, you ruined him when you could have brought him in as a big guy. Me, yeah. Ali, fucking ruined him. Me, the, now it's like, what, you're going to bring him back to the roster? Oh, formerly in the... Tugboat and Earthquake Part 2. It's like, what the flying fuck? That's disappointing to hear because they built this up for a long time and it didn't go anywhere. And to hear that he's over it. Not surprised, but disappointed. I can't wait until, what is it, Tuesday or Wednesday? Uh, you'll finally be back on Facebook, right? After voting? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 not, I'm not holding out for, like, a winner or anything. I'm just holding out for life to return to normal. Yeah. Somewhat. Somewhat. What? Hey, I'll be, I'll be able to post on Facebook. Yeah. I get out of jail in a week. You two, oh. are, you two are great on Facebook for Can Crushers, by the way. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome really plugging the shows and doing everything. I can't even and I gotta I gotta say this. I don't know if he'll listen to it. Happy belated birthday to uh Soup Geist. Buddy, I couldn't even send you a birthday message. They put me in so fucking deep of Facebook jail this time. Holy cow. I can't even like shit. He can't. <laughs> He can just look at shit that I post. He can't do anything. And don't be fucking smart asses and get on there and post shit that I can't do anything about either. In a week. Who did you offend? Oh, God. Oh, Politics. <laughs> well, yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. I went down the fucking line, got irritated, went down the line, told the truth about Trump, told the truth about the Republicans and everything like that, and I guess that shit didn't flow real well. I got a... 30 day for bullying and harassment. I uh, did the main event, Drew versus Randy. I put, we have a new champ. Because I didn't care for the match either. I They tried making this match, Undertaker against Mankind, uh, 2020 version. And it was far from 1917 version. It was, man, Drew McIntyre just can't have a fucking good match, can he? I am Not over really. him. I am really over him. They got to the top of the cage, which you could say, like, why did Mick Foley climb it in the first place? And But that, you know, that was the first time something like that had happened. They kind of climbed it for no reason. They stood up there and looked at each other for no reason. And I'm thinking, thinking back to what you witnessed live, Mark, there's going to be a breakaway spot. It's going to be awesome. Orton's going through, or, or Drew's going through. Then they just start climbing back down. For no reason. They climbed up there just to climb down. And then he got thrown off halfway. And it Again, it just it looked desperate. They were trying too hard to relive something. But those two guys were not Undertaker and Mick Foley. Sorry. Yeah, this was... This match ended. I'm glad for it. All right. So Chad lost. I did not. Our rating out of six beers. Uh, I'm going to go first this week. Two. And it's because the five-star match was the gals, and the rest just brought everything down. Yeah. Um, along those lines, I'm going to go one and a half. I really struggled with two. I don't think it it earned two, uh, one and a half solely because of the women's title match. Yeah, uh, geez, I don't. I I'm gonna go a one, honestly. I 
just just because of the women's title match, that's the only thing that saved it, but 30 minutes is not enough to save a three-hour pay-per-view. Um, there was too much talent missing from this. Um, oh, did you want Seth and Leah? Uh, we'll get there. They're just, I mean, no, no Seth, no AJ, no tag team titles, no... It there was just too much missing. They be, tried, <laughs> no pun intended. Tried banking on Sasha Bailey and Orton and Reigns. Would have been great if it would have those three matches would have showed, but only one of them did. Yep. Um. So I I gotta go a one. So we didn't like it, is what we're saying. Yeah. And let's go to Raw. Before we take our break, because I'm sure we can get through Raw real quick, because, again, qualifying matches yeah. for, for Survivor Series, um, the Funhouse was fun, I did like that, uh, Elias and Keith Lee, I, I could care about, again, the Hurt Business, and I'll let you guys talk about it, Hurt Business against Retribution, They've just gave us a Survivor Series match right there. Nobody fucking cares. Uh, the women's match that Nia puts Lana through the table again. Riddle's losing his first name. Who the fuck cares? And a moment of bliss with Randy. A ton of references. And the Fiends on stage. There's three hours and 35 fucking seconds. Why watch Raw? Yeah, yeah. Um couple of things that stood out to me that I wanted to touch on. That uh, four-way women's match or Survivor Series qualifier. You know, I look at the four participants, and I thought about Nikki Cross in NXT, and she was very cool. Very cool in NXT. Um, Peyton Royce, I love the Iconics. I don't know why they split them up. But Lacey Evans, uh, she's one of my favorites. She's so talented. Um, can get heat. I don't know why they turned her baby face for a little while there with her daughter, but the whole wiping her armpits and putting it in her opponent's face is just classic wrestling bad guy heat. I love her. And who wins this match? The fourth participant, Lana. To this day, I cannot explain why she continues to get any airtime. I just don't get it. I thought once... Her husband left. That would kind of be the end of her. And it seems like they're almost pushing her just to be spiteful. Like, oh, you're going to leave? Well, now we're going to make her a star. See, she did it without you. When in reality, and I'm not a big fan of his in AEW, they were a package. When he was the jealous, crazy guy, and she showed her foot to somebody, and somebody got a hard on over it, and he freaked out and beat him up. Great TV. They should have gone back to that. Yeah. Uh, and, and then, I'm sorry, the, oh, um, AJ Styles match in Hardy. That, that was a nice match. Nice. Yeah, that, that was one of the two, I was, one of the two things that stood out to me, AJ and Hardy, for as much time as they were given, and, you know, that it wasn't a pay-per-view, it wasn't a build-up match. That was a good match. I expect nothing less from those two. Right, um, I, I agree with AJ that. being my favorite wrestler of all time, he just keeps going. He just keeps going, and he can deliver. That, whoever that fucking Andre the Giant dude is that he has with him, holy shit is that fucking dude big. Austin Theory. No, that wasn't No, Austin. no, no, oh. come on. Austin Theory was the first week that was with oh. him. <laughs> um, But now that they're shooting the camera angles... Right, not not from the bottom, making Austin Theory look five foot six. Um, but the downfall of Chad, I'm going to throw this out here. Then we'll go to we'll go to our break. AJ Styles is now on uh, Team Raw Survivor Series, so that means for two months he's got nothing going. He's he's on he's the kinda, great yeah, Raw he, versus SmackDown Survivor Series. He yeah, it's in that thing. I I hope he spearheads a Raw invasion and they beat the fuck out of somebody on it's SmackDown or something, you know, uh, whatever. But always love AJ it just shows, to me, his flexibility, and he's one of these guys that are so good that he doesn't need to have a title on him. 
We'll talk about this the week that we talk about Survivor Series. And this is a teaser. This is a question for now. Um, Survivor Series was one of my... <laughs> wow. Excuse me. Sorry. That's only after one and a half. Um, Survivor Series was one of my favorite pay-per-views. I liked when the mishmash teams would fight mishmash other teams. I don't give a shit that it's Raw against SmackDown anymore. Isn't this supposed to be what Night of Champions is? Like, Night of Champions should be SmackDown against Smack, uh, against Raw, right? That's where this should happen. Survivor Series. <laughs> Jesus. Corona. Uh, um, we should, uh, <laughs> we should, <laughs> all right. Not really, but, um, we should have those matches again. I, I'm just upset about Survivor Series. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, Roman and Randy Orton for the 543rd fucking time. It's almost as old as Al Snow is. Almost. Almost Damn. as old as Al Snow. And speaking of Al Snow, he's got an amazing clothing brand. You know what it's called, Chad? Well, hold on. I didn't get my. You skipped ahead. Sorry, Al. If uh, turn your hearing aid up a little bit, and we're not talking about that. Was a teaser for a Survivor Series. You're not allowed answering that question. No, no, I'm not going to answer that question. I had something more for Raw. Oh, the only other thing that stood out to me was Alexa Bliss's thing. Is it just me, or is her dress that way and the way she was acting? It just made me feel like a fucking dirty old man because she's still smoking. She could dress in a suit made of shit and still be hot. Okay, on the on speaking of shit. No, we can't say that. <laughs> what a transition. That's a horrible transition. <laughs> um, since we're still on Alexa Bliss and we'd all like to be on Alexa Bliss. Speaking of something hot. Right. Uh, well, I want to talk about birthday cake. <laughs> it would be it would be engulfed in flames. Uh, collar and elbow. I have my collar and elbow hoodie on this week as it's, what, 31 and a half negative degrees here in fucking Ridgeway. It's cold. Um, not in this house, though. This house is an inferno. Just like collar and elbow. They have hot products out there, guys. They're amazing. Hats, hoodies, tees, shorts, hats, stickers, all that at collarandelbow.com. You can get 10% off when the English professor gives you the promo code. It is Can Crushers, all one word. Capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers, all one word. And Chad, what's the? Where can you get it again? Collar and Elbow. Dot com. Dot com. Here comes Al to tell you everything about it. We're grabbing more beers because we're getting long in the tooth. Wrestling, a love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. Hi, this is Julia Lynn, a.k.a. The Dime Piece, and you're currently listening to the Can Crushers podcast. I guess you should pay attention because, I mean, they asked me to be a part of it. Welcome back to Can Crushers. It is I, the English professor, joined by Chad, the glorious guru. Your host is Mark Martinez, uh, and we are discussing AEW, which uh, guys kicked off with a town hall meeting hey. between MJF and Chris Jericho. Hey, uh, during a break, I saw that you have um, the Yingling. Are you drinking the Yingling Golden Pilsners? Pilsner, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, the Pilsners, too. They, they live in St. Mary's. <laughs> Um, they have a car dealership. They were a car dealership. They still are a car dealership. <laughs> do you do you like do you like those as much as the regular Yingling? I like the regular better. They literally had 
one can left. It was the big cans, the the 24 ounces where you can like mix and match your six pack. Yeah. And there was one left. I like the Golden Pilsner too a lot, but I do yeah, too. Only had one left. But yeah, all right, all right, yeah. So let's let's talk about AEW since we're not talking about the business so, anymore. Before John, you hit with AEW with the show and that. Let's throw out because this figures into the show. There is a new NWA Women's yeah. Champion. There is. Yep. There is. That happened Tuesday night. Guys, we're going in chronological order this week, if you can't tell. Um, Serena Deeb defeated Thunder Rosa on that prime time show that uh, I've dropped the ball on ordering this package, but we'll get back around to it. Um, it's a shocker. Chad, I'm, I'm glad actually you brought this up before we get to AEW. <sighs> WWE is looking at Thunder Rosa. AEW. Rumored. Rumored. But. Uh, AEW as well. Guys, if she goes to WWE, she's ruined. I hate I, I Thunder Rosa. If you're listening, and we have any clout in your career, um, don't go. Don't what you can do in AEW. They're going to allow you to work with NWA. They're going to allow you to you know they, you've seen that across the board. Moxicillin is still working with New Japan, so don't you'll you'll make you'll make more and you'll be more famous -er. That's not correct, I know. Hey, but, quit stealing Dolph Ziggler's fucking well, that catchphrase. Be, that would be uh, Billy Gunn first. Well, Dolph Ziggler calls it the famous -er. Okay. So, yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Props to Serena Deeb. We love her. We do. But this got me out of nowhere. I was, I was kind of upset about it. I figured Mark was probably crying when he seen this. I was, I was like, I'm not going to say anything to him. But um, from the highlights that I seen of the match online, uh, another hard fought uh, physical match between them. There is the rumor about Thunder Rosa going to WWE, looking at her. I hope not. But then Billy Corrigan and Thunder Rosa both both have addressed it on Twitter. She's under contract through the end of 2021 with NWA. And Billy Corrigan, straight the fuck out, said about Dave Meltzer, who was the one, you know, good old Uncle Dave, who, you know, should have his microphone and recorder taken from him, um, that, funny, he didn't ask anybody, and he has my phone number, and he has my email address. And she went on record as saying, that's news to me. Anybody know what I'm negotiating for? Which, we're, before John gets one second in on this, which would make sense going WWE. She had just re, re energized, re surged, re everything, Mission Pro Wrestling. She just brought that back where everything in Mission Pro Wrestling is done by a woman. Booking, matches, referees, commentary, uh, Ray Lynn's heading there, uh, one of our Can't Crush Your Friends, you know, we have other ones that are there. Do you see a uh, real WWE? Because she'd have to just, all right, we did, we did three shows for Mission Pro, we gotta wrap this up, because there's no way in F Vince is gonna let that happen. John, what do you think about that? I agree. I think, and I, we don't know, but I think that if you belong to WWE, all of you belongs to WWE. Your creativity, your soul, your ego, your very essence of being is owned by the WWE. So I don't see her having wrestling-related projects outside of WWE. She wants to be in a movie. I'm sure they'll promote her in other ways. But I don't see her having wrestling projects outside of WWE. Um, hey, again, if she is listening or, or gets wind of this somehow, I, I hope you make a million bucks, Thunder Rose. I really do because I love you and I'm a big fan and you deserve it. Um, boy, though, as marks, you'd uh, you'd break our hearts if you went to uh, – to those big guys there. I think creatively she could do so much more in any other promotion. Even our promotion. Yeah. All right. AEW, John, bring it around with the, uh, what? 
the town hall meeting. Jericho. All right. Go ahead. Run with it. You can. I, you, I'm going to sit back and drink. You want me to run with it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So AEW kicks off, as I said, between MJF and Chris Jericho. Another um, entertaining segment. We see them again later on in the program. And so this is where, in hindsight, I didn't think we needed this then to kick off the show. Right? You guys? I agree. Well, you see, if we see it later, kick it off with the, the hangman match. Well, this wasn't the real ta- town hall meeting. This was just the... Right. the we're just getting ready for it. We're, get, we're all getting ready right. for it, and Sammy hates everybody, and I love Sammy still. But... Yeah, just start with the Wardlow match. Yeah, Chad, anything? I'm. I'll. I'll are we going to talk about the real town hall later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. then I'll make my comments. And this. Okay. I. I think I. I don't care if it's a cold start or whatever to a match. Um. But you got to have a match to start out a fucking wrestling show. You got to have something to grab the people by their ball or other uh, genitalia and keep their interest. And these guys bullshitting is not the fucking way to start it. it it's a great. Yep. Later in the program, it worked. Would not have kicked off the show with it. Uh, we get to Wardlow versus Hangman Adam Page. The winner of this match moves on to the finals. Uh, so this was a semifinal match. The winner goes on to the finals to determine a number one contender for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Um, I'm a big Wardlow fan, guys. I think he was always very good. I think he's gotten a little sharper. Um, good performance all around. Body language, uh, facial expressions. Uh, his eyes helped to tell a story. I like the fact that Hangman Adam Page was really laying in some shots. But Wardlow, being the, the, the guy that he is, big, strong guy, bodyguard, right? Uh, he didn't no-sell. He semi-sold, which truly speaks volumes. I think from the business standpoint, he doesn't want to show up, this guy. Um, and then from the storytelling standpoint, it's like I'm this big, big brutish guy and I can't be hurt. Oh man. But that kind of hurt a little bit. Um, great storytelling throughout. I think when he hit the F 10, I like the fact that page ducked out of the ring. Cause you could almost say Wardlow would have won the match. Had he gone for that, for the pin, had he been able to go for the pin quickly enough, really, really good match. Yeah, I, I like the match. I was torn in this because I've been an Adam Page fan for years. Um, and, of course, Wardlow's the man. Uh, that's just it. You knew what this tournament was going towards the final, and we'll talk about that. Um, great match. Like John said, Wardlow sold, but at the same token, he didn't take it like a, you know, fucking fish being beat with a billy club or something like that. Um, great great match. I love both these guys. I, I love Wardlow just a little bit more uh, because personally know him, hanging out with my son, IWC, all of that. Um, I'm actually disappointed. We knew we know where this, this whole tournament was setting up, this, that, and the other. And we talked about it last week that, okay, Hangman's going to beat Wardlow, this, that, and the other thing. <clears throat> but actually seeing the match, Wardlow only has one loss on his record, and it's to Cody. Okay? Nothing against Hangman. I love him. I love everything they're going to do with Hangman. I don't like that Wardlow's second loss now in AEW is to Hangman. Um, I, I almost wonder if they're going to have Wardlow maybe on... A little bit of a losing streak now that he needs to snap back and, you know, really punish MJF when this all happens or something. But Wardlow's still being sold as, you know, the beast, the the man incarnate, da 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 da, da. We can use all those references. Um, I love Hangman. I love Hangman. I just wasn't, I wasn't happy when I saw that his second loss ever in AEW was to Hangman because... 
how how are we gonna build him back up from Hangman? He's he's a superstar, but how are we gonna build him back up from this loss? Um, I think we're a little too emotionally involved with people like Wardlow and Britt Baker. I'm okay with this. I, I think Hangman's one of the top guys in the company. As we said, it's building towards that anyway. Um, and I like the clean finish. I don't think this hurts him. I think you're going to see a big singles push for him soon enough for, for, for Wardlow. All right. Um, up next, we have Matt Seidel against Eddie Kingston. Um, this was not a tournament match. This apparently was sort of a, a just because match. I love uh, everything about Eddie Kingston. I, I really do. His promos, his ring work. Uh, I like the brawling style. It's a little old school. Um, Matt Seidel kind of has, well, not kind of, he does. He's, he's had quite an indie career. And he has quite a following. Um but one of the reasons I'm a big fan of AEW is you see clean finishes. Guys and, and the women, they check their egos at the door. Um, you get wrestling matches every week. This was another instance of that. This, this was a match to get Eddie Kingston ready uh, for John Moxley. Um, at the end, they kind of treat Seidel like a bitch. He gets him in another submission. I, was, I think it was like the chokehold that, that Moxley got on Kingston, um, and they made him yell, I quit. Yeah, that that's pretty much all I had to say about that is that uh, Eddie made Kingston say I quit. He made Seidel become Moxley at the end of the match and just showing Mox that, hey, you did this to me, I know how to do it now too. I watched the match and I know how to put the chokehold on. Yeah, this, uh, I was just reminded of something that uh, Ole Anderson actually said this week about... Uh, talking about Eddie Kingston in typical Ole fashion. He's like, that son of a bitch is good. He's good on the mic and his work is good. Uh, you need more guys like him in wrestling today. Uh, some guys are good on the mic, but, you know, to use my phrase again, couldn't wrestle their way out of a fucking ripped paper bag. Um, then you got guys that can wrestle, but can't talk. Can't talk. Eddie Kingston can do both. And I'm really? looking forward to next weekend in the full gear pay-per-view. I am. Him and Moxley, because I hope and pray, and I I think AEW will do it. I think that is going to, they're going to beat the living shit out of each other. Yeah. Uh, you know, one more thing about this. What this reminded me of, of all the silly things, I'm being totally serious. The fact that he did the chokehold that Moxley did to him, it, it's an old school thing where like a guy's got a hold or a move and somebody else learns it or prepares for it. Like Ronnie Garvin learned the figure four leg lock so he could fight Greg Valentine. But this reminded me of when Ricky Steamboat was getting ready to wrestle Ric Flair and he did that training in the ring against like five guys and everybody had to do a Ric Flair move. And Dustin Rhodes dropped a knee on him, but he got his hands up to block it. And Ric Flair just went bananas. Are you comparing a Dustin Rhodes knee drop to a Ric Flair knee drop? And Jim Ross was like, well, no, all we're saying is he does a knee drop. And it's just a training session. Flair still got the knee drop on him. So the point of all this is uh, Kingston could do whatever he wants. I think Moxley's still going to get the that chokehold on him. Wow. Yeah. Is, that, is that your prediction already? Yeah. Wow. All right. So, speaking of can't wrestle but can talk or can't talk but can wrestle, we have FTR, and I'm not talking about them, and the Young Bucks. The Young Bucks are joined by, uh, they're being interviewed by Excalibur. Ex which was I like great. FTR and Tully. I think they're very good with their snappy insults, their quick one-liners. Chad, I'm starting to think the Bucks just need to have dialogue written for them. They, oh my God, they're fucking horrible. That guy is uh, the one, I don't know which of the young sucks it is. The one that's grown his fucking hair out and he looks like, uh, what was that fucking caveman movie with years ago? 
Uh, I can't think of what the actor was. They brought him back to life, found him Encino frozen. Man. Encino Man. Oh, he's yeah. Fu- he's fucking Why do I know that? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> it's like I can recall wrestling shit, triple A shit, and stuff like that, and you and you recall fucking Encino Man. But he's just... Re- they're just... There's nothing that's believable about them. They can't talk. They don't... They can't really wrestle. All they do is flip around the fucking ring like they got firecrackers shoved up their ass. The, um, I just, And it's not just my personal dislike for them, but, th- oh, geez. And so help me, I am going to puke if them motherfuckers beat FTR after the first putting time. their... Not the first time. After putting the we'll never challenge for the titles again shit. I'm hoping hoping they're going along the lines of Cody and they're not going to challenge till way down the road because if, if maybe they, they get the be, US championships back then the US they, I don't championship. I don't care if they wrestle fucking Sonny Kish and Sonny Kish Kish Kiss, Kiss. have another drink Kiss, here, you no know shit. and fucking uh Joey Nutella and beat them for the Hermaphrodite <laughs> The hermaphrodite tag team titles or whatever, but Jesus, please don't let them win. And Tully, Tully Blanchard and FDR are so fucking good. Tully, I'll say it again. I said it two weeks ago about the passion that he still has for the fucking business. And he's just as good on the mic now as he was back, you know, when he was cussing Dusty or Magnum or Baby Doll or whoever out. Well, my joke isn't going to go over as well, uh, because I knew John was going to bring this up this week, because I know how much he loves people that can talk, and they cannot talk. My whole joke was, they need to be Faith No More with the epic uh, <laughs> music video, where the whole music video is just them dropping poster boards of words. That's how no, they should... That's in excess. Yeah, all right, in excess. All right, yeah. Cool. That's how they need to do their promos. Uh, what Sammy did during the commercial breaks and just having that. The Young Bucks promos should just be them. We're the Young Bucks. Drop. We want to fight somebody. Drop. Anybody that wants to fight us. Because it sounds like they have fucking marbles in their mouth and they're drunk. They they just cannot yeah. get the point across. That's I sound the worse. They're not intimidating in any way, shape, or form. I mean, Vinny sat there the other night, and he was like, Dad, who are those? I was like, the Young Bucks. He was like, I could beat them. (laughs) And I'm like, damn. And then I'm like thinking about it. Well, he's probably about their fucking height and width. I I have to throw this out to one of our biggest fans. Uh, she's, She's a huge fan of the Young Bucks. And I, I just want to say, Ashley Lugwin, um, I'm sorry. I, there's never been a tag team that I hate more because they can't. We love you, Ashley. Yeah, we, we love did. Ashley. Well, I, yeah. well, I didn't love her last week because she thought she was pulling a fast one on me when it, when the Titans lost to the Steelers. They're not going to remake it to the playoffs and fight again. Ashley, come on, you're you're silly. So you're, you're saying that the Steelers aren't going to make it? Shut up, Chad. Yeah, Denver's gonna. Oh, fuck you and your Denver comments. Um, I just, I gave them shots, and I gave them shots, and I thought, well, they had a decent match. Ah, they just, they do nothing. My, my figurines, my action figures, playing wrestling. A fight in a cardboard box is more entertaining you know, than the Young Bucks. John can go, and you know I, I know how he feels about the Road Warriors. We've joked about that, and he would probably still be naming teams off that he you thought were better than... You wouldn't put them above the Road Warriors, though, would you? No. Hell but, no. no. <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you, you know who I would rather watch wrestle than the fucking Young Bucks? The Ding Dongs. Close. Close. Mul- Mulkies. The Mulkies. <laughs> yep. That's where I was going. I'd rather watch Randy and Bill Mulkey because they had more talent. They were more believable. The Young Bucks, it's just like, 
you, you could put your finger uh, on we, their fucking forehead and they could swing at you and still not touch you. We've spent way too long. Okay, Please sorry, move on to the talk now. Yeah, v- very quickly. We got a lot of AEW left. You mentioned this, I think, Chad, but it is title versus future title opportunities. That's an important thing to note. If the Young Bucks don't win, they said they will never challenge again. Uh, and another quick point I want to make. When we were watching this, my son Sylvan thought that when FTR and Tully Blanchard walked out, Wherever they were, they weren't really there. They were, like, next door, and they were going to show up and, and jump the Young Bucks, which would have been very cool, but that didn't happen. Um, then we have the uh, meeting with the Inner Circle and MJF, and they're taking questions. They took questions from Luchasaurus. The I real thought, town hall. This is the this town is hall. real town hall meeting, Yes. I thought Dr. Baker and uh, Rebel were very funny with Rebel going on and on and gushing over how handsome Chris Jericho is and Britt telling her, don't be weird. And then, guys, we get a surprise. We get Eric B. But did you notice Eric Eric B. was there, but Rakim wasn't? Yeah, I did, right? Yeah, and I don't know if you know this. Rakim has a song where he says, no, I ain't down with Eric B. no more. So they had a falling out, which is why Eric B. was there by himself. And Rakim Allah wasn't there. Oh, that sucked. I, I wish know. it, I wish I you would have showed up together. I know. Uh, yeah, it's this, bl- what? <laughs> this ta- no, this this town hall meeting. I'm okay. This is my hopeful side of this. This is where they caused the strife with Sammy G and Jericho because they kind of teased it a little bit. Where Jericho's like, "Yeah, we're going to do this," but then. Which, what was it, Ortiz? Yep. Yeah. Ortiz and Sammy are, are like, we don't fucking want them here. This is where I think they cause the, the strife with them and break it up. But I still think that MJF is going to bring in, and this is what's going to cause the problem with him and Wardlow, you're going to see the MLW invasion. A couple of those guys come in. And Jericho's going to be like, I just wanted to get you guys pissed off at each other. Do you think I want to be with a, you know, short midget, a guy that's been in wrestling for 60 years and uh, lacks light, as Santana and Ortiz were originally called? Um, I hope that's where it's going. I thought this was actually a little bit too long. I really did. Uh, I thought it was... It was witty, da, 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 but I thought it was a little too long. Um, we get a match out of Sammy and Ortiz against MJF and Wardlow next week, is what this sets up. And it sets up a match at the pay-per-view between MJF and Jericho. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, a bit long of a segment, like you said, sets up two important matches. I think it would have been better served, like, that moment of conflict, that first moment, that's where it ends. Like, you know, hey, Jericho, what if... You know, Britt says, what if he turns on you? Whatever Britt's question was, you know, I'll kick the shit out of him. I'll kick his teeth down his throat face to face. And boom, the guys get in between. That ends it. But now we all calm down and we have another question. Do you know what I'm saying? It was yep. like, oh, my God, it's building. And we're right back sitting down again. Yeah, just a little long. Still entertaining, though. Uh, hey, John, I got a question for you. And I, I thought of you about this. Were you impressed with how eloquent and well-versed Luchasaurus was with his question? I was, yeah. I was like, holy shit. And then I got to remember, in real life, this dude's got ex-master's degrees and everything like that. I was like, holy fuck. I was like, John would like this shit. And I started laughing. Well, when you're a million years old, you can just continue to go to school. and He's well-educated. Yeah, you can just keep I mean, he, he learned from, you know, back in Moses. Al Snow. Well, no, well, not that old. All right, well, he's yeah. next year. I was, um, I did a scene from Midsummer Night's Dream. I was there, and then I was also in She Stoops to Conquer, which was maybe like a hundred or so years after Shakespeare. Two different kinds of English, and I did those shows at the same time. I guess if you go back far enough, sixty-five million years, the English from back then is pretty similar to ours today. If you listen to Luchasaurus speak. But it's not Martinez yet. Nobody. No, no clearly not. Right. That's that's its own thing. Uh, up next, we get a lumberjack match. 
for the TNT Championship, Cody versus Orange Cassidy. Um, lots of shtick, as we like to say on this show. Um, guys were outside the ring, and this happens in any sort of lumberjack match. They just put their own twist on it. If the good guy is over by the bad guys, he'll get beat up and get thrown back in. But if he's with his buddies, they try to help him up. This kind of followed similar scenarios, depending on who got thrown out where. Um, what stands out for me was Orange Cassidy on the top rope. And he did that thing with his arms like he gave a signal like he was going to spin around. And then he just kind of lazily fell off the top rope. This guy relates to kids. My son loves him, thinks he's hilarious. Um the match was was okay. I think these guys can do better, um, but this this wasn't it for me. Um, go we, ahead. Cody we, gets the win, but go ahead. We've seen him do better. Their first match yeah. was better. This yeah. one was, oh, all the Lumberjacks are fighting in one corner. Let's do the superplex onto them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, Darby turns into Sting sitting in the highest part of uh, Daly's place, watching the match, getting set up for his match at full gear against whoever wins. And, yeah, this wasn't this wasn't a good Cody uh, Orange Cassidy match. Two, you knew what was coming. Um, the only thing that really stuck out, well, sorry, two little things you mentioned. Um, what the fuck was his name? I'm sorry. The, Orange Cassidy. No, the dude. Darby, Darby Allen. Allen sitting up there. Holy you know, maybe shit. he should have had a fucking crow with him. That, you know, would have been yeah. really, See, I, really cool. Instant reference to that, right? Yeah. Instant reference. That's, it was that's what I was thinking. I was like, waiting to see a crow or, yeah. you know, something. Um, but, but it was still cool. And Arn Anderson, I, is this starting to plant the seeds that Cody's going to, like, what the fuck? You know, oh, Cody didn't see Arn Anderson bitch slap. Fucking Orange Cassidy, sucker punch him and everything like that. Are they are they setting the seeds for a split or for Cody to say fuck this? I am going bad or or, or what? Huh, that well, was the only thing I took out of the match. Before either one of you jump, um, Cody has now announced more people are in a nightmare club. The guns, Billy and Austin Gunn, and uh, I don't know. I, I think Vinny made it and Sylvan made it. Is now wow, he didn't tell me anything. In in uh, the Nightmare Club, I, somebody else was too. I'm like, well, isn't this Nightmare Club supposed to be about air quotes family? You know, Cody, Dustin, Brandy, QT has been a member for a long time because he he's I don't know wiped Brandy's ass when she was a baby or oh what God, <laughs> whatever baby but, sadder, I, whatever. But you know there was a there was a, like a relationship. Now the guns are in it, and Sylvan and and Vinny. And like, what? I want to be in it. The only no, two, I don't want to be in a nightmare. The club. only two members that would be worth anything in that that you mentioned would be Sylvan and Vinny. Right. And this shit is fucking turning in to the NWO where everybody but the fucking announcers was in some faction of the NWO. No, Bischoff was in it. He was an announcer. No, I'm everybody but him, like Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone. Zabisco. You know, everybody but those. It's like, oh, geez, okay, yeah, we're all family. I, w I was waiting for that song. We are family. I was waiting for that to fucking hit. Who I, interfered at the end? Before Arn Anderson, I, like, looked away for a second, and, like, somebody came in. Uh, before the, Arne... One of the Dork Order came That's in. That's right, yes, yes, a member of the Dork Order. I don't... Yeah, okay. Um, something interesting that might come from this. Um, you're talking about Arn Anderson. Where does he stand on this? For him to not want to go along with Cody's behavior, I don't know. I struggle with that because maybe he's changing in his older years. But Arn Anderson was a bastard, right? Even as a good guy, he was well, a bastard at times. But when, That's why I love him. What I'm saying yeah. about like Arn Anderson not going with Cody's behavior, and that where I'm taking it is is Cody doing shit like the push ups and everything. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know fucking focus. going yeah. going stupid like that. And Arn, I I just think that Arn's going to be you know I want so, I, somebody that's going to take this seriously and not do push ups or floss their fucking teeth or 
you know, cut their toenails in the fucking right. ring or something like that. Right, right. I, I think it's interesting... Go ahead, Mark. Britt would be happy if you flossed your teeth. Right, yes. I, I think an interesting twist here would be if... Like what Art Anderson did with, with Chris Benoit when he was feuding with Kevin Sullivan. He's like, look, I know we're the horsemen, but Sullivan's my friend. But when the shit hit the fan and Benoit had a serious problem... Arn was the first guy to put the beat down on Kevin Sullivan because the horsemen stick together. I'd love to see that with Dustin. Like, I don't like what you're doing, but I'll be the first guy to defend you if you if you think of doing that. That's Arn Anderson to me. Um, All right. Yep. Is that it? Okay. Move along. Uh, up next, the NWA Women's World Championship. So if you guys didn't know, we mentioned earlier, but if you didn't know when you were watching the show – um, you'd be surprised. Serena Deeb is the new women's champion, and she defended against um, Layla Hirsch. I don't know anything about her. She's thick, stocky, strong-looking woman, <laughs> heavy hitter. I don't mean that mean. She's like big, beefy girl. Looks like she can beat people up. Thick and beefy in the same sentence. Uh, I love this match. I'll, I'll yeah, stop you right now. I love this match. It was great mat wrestling. Like, I don't know squad douche about Layla Hirsch. I wasn't going to call her thick or beefy. She's young. She's new into the business for probably a couple of years. What she did on her... Too. Go ahead. What she did on her AEW uh, Dynamite premiere, I'm a fan. Yeah. Agreed. Chad? I like, sorry, I like the match. Uh, Serena Deeb, uh, I had heard the name was a little bit, had seen some of her matches. Um, my whole thing, I'm just wondering what's going on with the NWA and AEW. But, but we, because we, Serena Deeb is actually a signed under contract AEW talent. Ah. So it was something, I was like, hmm. And we, Mark has already wiped away his tears from Tuesday night by now. Um, like a little bitch. Serena, Serena Deeb's a little bit older than, you know, Britt Baker, Alexa Bliss, uh, Sasha Banks, you know, all, all the people that we uh, Google-eye about. She's still a beautiful woman. My God. I mean, we're, we're going to throw out all these beautiful women because I have a couple more coming up during SmackDown. Um, holy schmoles, Serena Deeb's good looking. Yeah. The beer's and flowing tonight. We, we talked about her when we saw her on, uh, another episode of Dynamite and Mark, obviously, you know, you filled me and you knew more about her and we said that she's a great in-ring worker. It looks like she's helping out the younger women. She deserves something of her own. And we, we predicted some point down the road, she might hold a women's title. I never thought it was going to be the NWA women's title. Uh, if this is sort of the end of the NWA, um, I think maybe you see a unification match between the AEW and, and NWA Women's Championships at some point. All signs point to the fact that they took it off of uh, Thunder Rosa. All signs point to maybe that relationship between AEW and Thunder Rosa being over, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll see. It's it's got us talking and it's got us guessing, which means way more than what was a pretty solid match. Yeah, uh, another uh, women's uh, little thing from AEW. Uh, Tay Conte and I can't remember what is the the freakish girl that was in AEW. Abandon. Abandon. They actually had a match that was supposed to air on this episode. And Abandon suffered a throat injury. She took a errant elbow uh, straight in the throat and couldn't breathe. She's out of action for and a while. And she's out of action for a while. Um, but that was supposed to originally air with us. Obviously, they're not going to air that. And that actually was why Sadal and Kingston made the uh, air. That's a match that replaced this. Go ahead. We got two more matches, guys. Up next, uh, Sean Spears versus VSK. No idea who this guy is. Isn't that a fucking um, venereal disease yeah. or something? I don't. I guess. 
to quote Roddy Piper in his uh, debut match against uh, Larry the Axe Henning, the bell rang, and then the bell rang. And that was pretty much this match. What happened after the match is really the story. Uh, Sean Spears grabbed the bull by the horns, so to speak. Yeah, literally. Uh, I'm going to move along fast. Whatever. I... I... Him and Scorpio Sky, I, whatever. I don't care. Um, we're, we're close to 40 minutes on AEW itself. I love Scorpio Sky. We we have NXT yet in this uh, in this segment, so we need we need to move along. All right. Chad, anything on this one? Nah, I got nothing on this one. All right. Uh, I love this last match, Kenny Omega against what the hell is this guy's name? Pentagon El Zero M. Like, what is his full name? Chad's giving me the finger because he hates Kenny Omega. But I thought this was a good match. What is this guy's name? Pentagon. Totally... Just call him Pentagon Jr. That's Pentagon what everybody Jr. knows him by. Okay. Um, I love the fact that Kenny Omega took off his jacket or lifted his shirt or whatever, and he had a Triple A AAA title from Mexico. Um, it just, I love belts from other promotions. It reminds me of when Jim Crockett was taking over his portion of the world, and we saw belts from Florida. Um, Georgia, we saw it from uh, Terry Taylor brought the belt over, the TV title from Watts. So I love seeing that. I, I love seeing other promotions champions on AEW. It um, it feels like a wrestling company. You know what I love? Watching your wife behind you set up for your movie night tonight, bringing all the candy in. And you have no recollection what the hell is going on in the back. She's setting up an awesome night for you guys. We have Halloween buckets going through. And well, you can see behind me. I can't see behind me. You should be able to hear her. Yeah, she, I got my headphones in. Uh, I, I'm here. I'm in the moment, Mark. I'm yeah. going to Can Crushers when I'm with you. I uh, I love seeing your wife. I love your wife. Um, This match did nothing for me. Really? I, mean, I, I love Pentagon, and I'm on Chad's fucking bandwagon waving the flag. I can't stand Kenny Omega. I'm not a fan either, but uh, he gets the win uh, to set up for the Hangman Page Kenny Omega Finals. Here we go. You knew you knew who was going to win the match. You know, it, if it was somebody else, maybe I could have been invested, but... When you know somebody that you absolutely hate, Max that you Louis. loathe, that you'd rather have fucking kidney stones versus watching a match of his, I just, I, I can't. I, I, twinkle toes McFinger fuck in his spirit fingers and dancing and shit. I just, there's nothing, the only reason I'm going to watch him and Paige is hopefully Paige goes fucking ape shit and brings back the hangman's noose and fucking throws him off of a balcony or something and hangs him. Holy schmoly. We have NXT yet to cover. Do you, do you guys want to make four seg... Or, or, or how about we... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to veto everything right now. Why don't we cover NXT and SmackDown in the... The next segment, since this went 40 minutes already. That was that was my thought, too. SmackDown is going to be quick, as normal. We, we wrapped up AEW in a whole 40-minute segment. And then uh, we'll come back with Halloween Havoc, which yeah. was all right, but it was probably one of the better Halloween Havocs ever. <laughs> That's a low bar, but still. I didn't see anybody get electrocuted, so fuck it. It wasn't good. All right. Halloween Havoc from NXT and SmackDown, and then uh, we'll wrap up this whole show. Hey, this is Base Jesus Billy Starks, and you're listening to the Out of the World podcast of Can Crushers. And welcome back to Can Crushers, you cretins of Can Crushers, the cult of Can Crushers. We got Mark here, wow. who's on his 18th beer and it's close. third thing of Skull Snuff. And we have John, who's preparing for... Halloween, his wife's behind him making faces and making him look like a dork, and he doesn't even know it. Welcome back, guys. Um, I I meant to ask this in the first segment. 
Um, when your kids go Halloweenin, and I know, John, you said yours are kind of out of it, but Ethan's out there right now pillaging for candy, and who knows how the hell Vinny's doing, but uh, when you guys used to dig through their bags, all right, which I will do tonight, here in about safety reasons, 45 of course. minutes, yeah, safety, uh, safety, uh, quality control is what we call it. What's the first thing you grab for yourself? Snickers bars, Snickers. Snickers bars. Kit Kats. Yeah, I love the lemon heads. Lemon heads around this time are the best. I don't know why. I've always been a Lemonhead fan. When you go to the movie theater, you can buy the box of Lemonhead. What is the on on that? What is the worst Halloween treat either your kid or you ever got? Candy corn and those peanuts. Mark used to love those peanuts when we were kids. I, I love circus. Disgusting. I love circus peanuts. Circus Can peanuts. Wow. Okay. I love those. I do. Which what's yours? Uh, candy corn's fucking god awful. My wife bought one of those two pound uh, plastic cylinders. I don't know what you call them. She containers? bought containers. A, a container is probably a good word. Yeah, she bought a two pound container of candy corn, and I don't know. I think we have two and a half pounds left. I have to go with it as much as I dislike candy corn. Um, I got to go with. The popcorn balls. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, that's, that, that's because unless those things were like, you know, really new, I mean, they had the fucking shelf life of Al Snow. It really has on there. Expires when Al Snow does. And they're just got stale. But that's just mine. Al Snow never gets stale. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. They have if if Al Snow never expires, those those popcorn balls, those things will be technically okay. All right, so we're gonna talk about NXT Halloween Havoc, which a little bit happened, and then uh, I'll run through SmackDown, and then I thought I had something else, but I you might did. Have you forgotten. had a quote. I know I do have a quote. I do. I do. But all right, Halloween Havoc. John, are you ready? I'm ready. You want me to go? No, go hell no. Okay. You you took forty. Yeah, minutes I did my thing. Already. Jeez, you took forty minutes for one show. I <sighs> probably won't hand that over to you again. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart's a perfect host for this. I wish you would have had a match, but she's a perfect host for this. Yeah, um, she was like the uh, what was it, the queen of c ceremonies? What what? Elvira, Elvira. Whatever she was called. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, that was her thing. It was good. It got old after, like, you know, by the fourth time you hear, arr, 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 now we're going to do another match. Like, okay, you know, I just, I didn't need her barking at the moon after every match. Damian but it was all right. She was good. Damian Priest against Johnny Gargano for the NXT North American title. Spin the wheel, make the deal. It turns out to be a Devil's Playground match, which is no disqualifications, falls count anywhere. It's a boot camp match. So uh, whatever the hell else you want, you got the death match. Right. Right. I thought uh, they, I thought they would turn up the volume a little bit more. Um, because even the next spin to wheel make the deal match wasn't good either. Uh, via the spin to wheel. I, I was looking for the Chamber of Horrors or something stupid that they would bring back. Not just this. And this was a lazy way out. The matches were no, very, the matches very were good. good. Right. Yeah. There was nothing spin the wheel about this thing. Especially when Johnny Gargano teased all the possibilities and he was kind of scared. And, you know, he's being silly. Like, what if it's a coal miner's glove match? All those sorts of things that we'll never see again. Uh, they just ended up being two hardcore matches, basically. One or was more of a <coughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Sean Spears has that glove on. I bet you we see a coal miner's uh, glove on my okay. All right, nonetheless. Well, with Sean Spears, it's going to be more like a Michael Jackson's glove match. All right. <laughs> I think this is really good. Yeah. This was an excellent match. 
I love how Gargano sold the leg for most of the match because Damian Priest hit him with a uh, what the hell was it? It was like a pipe or something, right? That he found. Yeah, it was a pipe. Yep. It was a pipe. Yeah, and there was a point where he went for an insiguri. Um, Gargano did, and Priest held the pipe up, so he ended up kicking the pipe. He sold that for much of the match. Um, Priest was obviously the much bigger, stronger guy and had his way with him. I like the spot where Gargano opens uh, a coffin and a skeleton comes out and he gets scared, so he super kicks it. Love it. We can handle that stuff if it's in the middle of something athletic like this, and that's what it was. Great match, and holy cow, did Priest take a nasty fall at the end. He can remember Insiguri, but he can't remember Meteora. <laughs> Come on, Chad, you, Chad. Chad's next. You've already spoken your word. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, an, another one that that was incredibly hot. Her uh, <gasps> whole spiel. Uh, the match. Love the match. Johnny Gargano. You know, lo- love what the guy can do, but he's got no emotions. Yeah. But other than that. Uh, Damian Priest's entrance. Oh my I god! I thought it was like holy fuck. I was like, that was pretty fucking good. Yeah, I like that the whole head banging thing and everything like that. Uh, Damian Priest, unfortunately, in the fall that he took, um, they're not haven't really disclosed a lot of it, but he did suffer a legit injury. He got fucking hit by a tombstone. I'd get. I'd have a legit injury. injury yeah, that too. tombstone could have been, you know, you know Play Doh, Play Doh, uh, you know, paper mache. It was very dusty. Like it was dusty. It, it was almost medi- like dirt. It wasn't meteoric, though. No, no. <laughs> Next, um, I'm gonna <laughs> lump all of this together. I hated everything from Cameron Grimes and Dexter Loomis. I hated this. Me too. Me too. Hated it. This was their cinematic shit. It was fucking stupid. You're a wrestler. At some point, fight this guy. And I get what they were going for. Like, the slasher movie, you kick down one door, and then he locks another door. Well, if he kicked down the first one, don't just stand there. He's probably strong enough to kick down the next one. Or... Fight the guy. Like, you're a pro wrestler. This was... I hated this. And in a slasher film, at some point, the girl gets tired of running and, like, stabs Jason's eye out or cuts Freddy Krueger's nuts off or something. (laughs) Defend yourself! This was dumb. Yeah, this sucked. Uh, Grimes, I don't understand it. I've said before, he reminds me of a you know, fat card player from the fucking Wolverine movie or, you know, Kenny Rogers, the gambler or something like that. Now, that was a good movie, but he just reminds me of the fat card player that's just there and, you know, in his his stomach gets stuck on the fucking table when he's trying to push out from it. This, this is bad. The only thing, (laughs) I I like hearing Bad Street uh, Atlanta GA when Michael Hayes was rolling yeah. around and the song was playing. I kind of got him like, yeah, I like that song. All right, nonetheless. Um, Pat McAfee comes out with the tag champs. They talk about Adam Cole and Undisputed Era, how they hired Ridge Holland, and, you know, whatever Ridge is out. Uh, O'Reilly gets pissed off, and he comes out. We get a returning peep done. This was a swerve for me. This this and got not me. Isaiah. No, thank God. This was this was a swerve. I love. I'm not a Pete Dunn fan. All right. I now like Pete Dunn a little bit more because I, he hit Kyle Riley. No, I love Kyle oh, Riley, but at least I'm not a, an Ornick or the other. I don't. I don't care about those tag guys right now. You throw Pete Dunn into this a little bit. I'm intrigued now. What's going on? That's all I'll say. Intrigued is probably the best word. That's a big word for me after 18 beers. Think about when we were kids and our parents would watch wrestling with us and they hated a segment and didn't realize they were being sucked in. So they hated Ric Flair because he yelled too much, for example. I don't know. 
and talked about his clothes and his cars. And then Dusty Rhodes comes out and Magnum TA comes out. And then they get excited. You're like, yes, you know, this was the same thing for us, guys. I'm watching this and I'm thinking, God, I hate Pat McAfee. Oh, just, this is so stupid. This isn't wrestling. I don't hate it as a form of entertainment from a standpoint as a wrestling fan. I think it's just stupid and I don't want to watch it. And then you hear shock the system. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And I got excited again. So to your point, Mark, they suckered me. They got me. I will say when Pete Dunne came in, I thought, ah, what's he doing here? I don't quite get this. I had a feeling he was going to turn on him. I wasn't sure. But the moment O'Reilly took that step forward and Dunn was still behind him, I said to Sylvan, he's going to hit him in the back with the chair. That's when I saw it coming. Oh, well, you're the fucking, you're the man. I, yeah. I, John, you mirrored everything that I was thinking about this. It was like, what the fuck is Pete Dunn doing out there? I mean, it could have been anybody. You know, I, the only person I would have thought less if it was a returning thing was Ember Moon. Um, it was just, eh. It, uh, you you kind of saw it coming. It's setting something up. Uh, O'Reilly, obviously, with his talents, uh, joint manipulation, everything. Pete Dunne with his. They're setting up for a, a badass, brutal match between them. I'm kind of looking forward to it in that sense. But in this way... Pat McAfee, I get nothing from him. I didn't know who the fuck he was until he got involved with Adam Cole. And then this past week, I, he was on a show and hollering and everything. He's he is like uh, he's like Stephen A. Smith. He just he's a loud no. mouth with no fucking no. talent. I'm telling you, you're working your way to uh, suspension. Oh. Stephen A. Smith. That's what McAfee, I'm not defending him. I think, oh my god! But it's just McAfee's just like, is, is he going to be the little bitch that hides behind his guys? Is Cole going to challenge Literally. him to a, you know, some kind of match where Adam Cole absolutely can just beat the shit out of him, or are they going to pull something stupid where McAfee beats Adam Cole and Adam Cole has to leave NXT and that's how they move Adam Cole up to the roster? I just don't like McAfee. I'm with I'm with John on this. Uh, no, I, I don't agree. fucking I don't like him. He's he's one of these guys that has the look, but doesn't have the talent. He's not even that good on the mic. He just he yells and ma and makes fun of people. It's like no fucking point to anything. He's kind of like the fucking ultimate warrior. Before he fucking zones out and starts talking about Captain Kirk and the fucking Klingons and Yoda and Chewbacca and fucking everybody else. Wow. Um, Rhea Ripley against Gonzalez. I'm going to say favorite match of the night. These two girls brought it. And I'm going to say Ripley gets the win, but Gonzalez gets the push. Because... She looked great. I, I've always loved Gonzalez. I did. Um, she looked amazing in this match. She really did. Yeah, it was a can't-lose situation for her. You're absolutely right. Even though she loses the match, this was kind of her, her coming-out match, an opportunity to prove herself. They brought it. Um, I loved it. Two tall, big, strong women hitting power moves, hitting hard strikes. What's not to like? Good pacing. Um, enjoyed it. And it ends with sort of that, that corkscrew power bomb, right? Where she, she reaches under and pulls her hand underneath between her legs and power bombs her. Again, great match, clean finish, two big hard hitting athletes. I really enjoyed this a lot. Love the match. Everything you guys said, one thing going with something that was announced, um, that the NXT Women's Tag Title is going to be coming back. Um, I'm going to throw this out there. I think this match is going to show you the next champions. I think they're going to end up teaming up reluctantly and winning the tag titles. Ooh, big prediction. I'd love that. Yeah, I'd be all about I that. mean, they're, they're like, the, the respect there, Rhea Ripley... 
Uh, I, I, I just think I can see these guys being, you know, they're trying to do it with Nia Jax and uh, I can't Baszler. Remember. Baszler, sorry, can't remember. Yeah, I couldn't remember her name. But this one would be a more believable, yeah, a respect thing versus a oh, I'm a you know, whatever part you know, hundredth removed of the Samoan dynasty and. I'm somebody that Vince McMahon doesn't think is feminine or whatever type push. I think this is could be a believable tag team. I think that's who you're going to see win it. I love seeing the Yeti and the Shockmaster on... Oh, no. oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, EO against Candice. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Table, ladders, and scares. Yeah, it was an all right match. I wish they would have flip-flopped these matches. I uh, wish Gargano and Priest would have went last. Um, yeah, okay, I'll agree with that. I thought it was better than okay. I thought it was excellent. Um, That's a lot better than okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought <sighs> since Gargano won uh, his title match, I thought Candice LeRae was going to win hers. Uh, I'm glad to see that twist, though. I'm glad it didn't work out that way. Um I'm a big fan of Io Shirai, and uh, LeRae took just much like Damian uh, Priest earlier on, took a hell of a spill at the end of this match. When she was up there, I thought she was going to win, and she got pushed off the ladder over the top rope and through a ladder that was set up, I guess, between the apron and the railing, maybe, uh, and just bent it in half. Um, nasty spill, and she was laid out. Good stuff. Very good match. Love the match. Uh, I I don't know why they don't flip the switch on Candice LeRae that she's just going to go, you know, lose her fucking mind. Like, who was it in uh, Impact? Was it Rosemary with the wedding dress and shit and everything? And Sue Young. Sue Young. Sorry. Um I think that's where they're going with Candice LeRae. She's just going to be so frustrated and everything, and she's going to fucking snap. I'm all right with that. I like hey. Candice LeRae. Hey, what? Did we skip the uh, Cruiserweight match, Santos Escobar? We did. we did. Yeah, we did. I was just thinking about that. Yeah. I knew it wasn't this late in the, in the card. No, yeah, it's, I, I'm, I might have not, uh, wrote it down. Santos picks up a win um, using a, uh, a mask and a headbutt again. I love it. I love oh, yeah. it. And this was a situation, two really good workers who did the most with what little time they had. Uh, you could have easily taken away the Cameron Grimes haunted house nonsense or cut it in half or something and given these guys five more minutes. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yep. All right. SmackDown is going to turn into something uh, a little weird for us. <clears throat> We're going to gush over a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with wrestling. The one being Sasha Banks and one... Um, Roman Reigns and Uso started the show, okay? They, for they, they, 16 minutes. Yeah. Um, for 15 and a half minutes, though, I was watching the woman on the Thunderdome that had the bright yellow hair. If you guys have this, if you guys have this recorded, go back. God damn. My wife's not here. She is a looker. I'm already gushing over somebody, I don't know, her hair is bright yellow, she might have dyed it for Halloween or anything. Woman, if you're listening to Can't Crushers right now, get on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, get a hold of us, I want to talk to you. You're outright fucking gorgeous. And I love my wife, but if you're a wrestling fan to go on Thunderdome, you can bring something to this show for an episode. Wow. I loved her. Um, moving forward, I'm leaving work, and me and the English professor talk from the time I left work until the time I got home. He's like, don't skip past the Sasha Banks segment. And I didn't. If that was any tighter, if her outfit was 
any tighter I could see myself in it. And I'm trying not to do You're anything. seeing yourself in it anyway. I'm not trying to be Samuel Guevara and saying stuff, but holy moly. Holy that, that, moly. That little dance when she came out. And it was like, it had a little more pep to it because she was champion now. So she was, you know, maybe a little fuller of herself. But, uh, wow. Yeah, holy. I know we alluded to this earlier, but holy cow. Next, I want to talk about, thank God Bianca Belair won from Billy Kay and Nat because, all right, Nat's a heart, I understand, Billy Kay, whatever. Bianca Belair needs somewhat of a push. She is the EST. I love that she's at least on this. Um, I love the Lars interview. I really did. I love the whole new Mela. I want to see what Mela's going to bring. I really do. And and then we get Daniel against Uso. And Uso wins the qualifying match. And it sets up for something later that he just pummels Daniel. Uh, and he joins Roman. So that's SmackDown in a hole. Um, well, what's the understanding he suddenly reached? I get it now. I understand. It was what, what clicked. That- two hours later, he understands it. Uh, okay. Understands what? What was there to understand? I'm still unclear. Anything to win. Oh, okay. Anything to win, teach people a lesson, they get in your way. And Daniel Bryant was the right person to fight against him right there. I, 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 I'm I, being serious right now because he's always the the underdog. He's always the guy that, you know, Daniel Bryant, small, kind of... Still an independent, with the air quotes, wrestler. Da, 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 even though he's held the title 97,000 times. Da, 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 all his accolades and everything. This was a perfect person to beat up for him to join Roman in the trouble. The trouble? The tribal. Trouble? Yeah, I don't know. The trouble, Chef? We're, we're on 18 and a half now. The tribal uh, warfare that's going to go on. Good match, too. I really enjoyed it. Um... And I'll I'll reiterate what you said about Lars Sullivan. That was a great segment. It's good to see him get something and and run with it. It was believable. Some of the dialogue was a little, you know, the teachers laughed, and then the principal came down and laughed. All right, we're getting a little carried away here. I doubt that happened. But I don't know. I genuinely sensed his pain, and then I sensed – his satisfaction when he beat the crap out of these kids for picking on him one too many times. Sasha Banks smoking, <laughs> as usual. Lars Sullivan, um, you know, on the K- outside of kayfabe side, uh, you know, dealing with the anxiety and stuff, and that's what took him out before. Um, glad to see him come back. I hope that he can make it because he's a big guy with some talent, with the mic skills and everything. Uh, Uso and Daniel Bryan kind of knew that Jay was going to go against Roman or go with Roman. Um, The only thing I'm taking out of this is uh, Roman's kind of, now he's going to get maybe too big for his britches. Mr. Tribal Chief and everything like that. Where do they go from this? The Rock. The Rock is the only one that they could. The one that I would almost love to see. Chief J. Strongwell. Would be... Oh, God. <laughs> would be Jacob Fatu from MLW. No. The Black Sheep. I would love to see that, but... I. I don't want him to come into WWE because, as Vince does with almost anybody, he'd fuck it up. Uh, So, either Jules Strongbow or... uh, (laughs) or Steve Gatorwolf. Yeah, Steve, you know, something like that. But, yeah, The Rock, I think, is going to be the obvious one. He's going to come in, talk to Ro, try to talk to Roman everything, try to calm him down, say, uh, you know, blah, 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 and then Roman's going to tell The Rock to, you know, piss off, and this would be uh, 
a match I think could be a good brutal physical match. But it's not going to be allowed because Rock has so many Hollywood contracts. But out what there. is what is in effect now? What is he doing? I, what I, is he doing right now? If he's not filming a movie, then he can do. Yeah, some you're right. Shit. You're right. Not to sound like a know it all or anything, Chad. He may not be working on anything right now, but someone who's that much of a star may sign a contract with whomever. Um, Paramount Pictures, for example, to do three films this year, this year, and this year. He may have a contract that kicks in. You know, they're working on a script now that'll put him in a movie three years from now. If he sustains a life-threatening injury right now that negates this contract three years from now, then there's going to be hell to pay. Just, you know, to kind of put that out there and say, even though he's not working on anything now, he may have contracts coming up that that disallow him from taking that kind of uh, physical risk. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving forward, this coming weekend is action packed. We have the we did we're not doing new we're I'm drinking. We're not going to do predictions on full gear because everything's not out on full gear. Um, we will recap it next week. So make sure Saturday night you watch Full Gear, AEW. Also this Saturday night, uh, IWC has their homecoming. We'll probably cover that in a uh, spotlight. That's the same night. I do want to make a prediction for... Wait, well you can, and you can, and the downfall is I have to watch Full Gear on Sunday. So I do want to make a prediction off, for right. IWC. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because, because Sorry, Justin and Jenny. He won't let me do it. You can in a second. Um, this is my third anniversary coming up is... Oh, Christ. Thank God Kelly doesn't listen to the fucking podcast. Because... Let me send her a text and tell her to. No, she's waiting in the car already. My anniversary is Wednesday, by the way. Um... How long has she put up with you? Way, way fucking too long. Um, three years of marriage is Wednesday. Um, Saturday, we're going out to eat somewhere with my aunt and uncle and family. Da, 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 da. So uh, Full Gear will be a watch on Sunday. Um, so on and so forth. Or maybe the recap at like midnight or whatever. Uh, whatever. I'm just rambling right now. But I know... Saturday night is just, I lose Saturday I night. I hope, I, I don't want to know your business, I hope you're not going to watch a pay-per-view recap at midnight the night of your anniversary, but go on. My my anniversary is Wednesday. Uh, oh, that, you said that already, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, my anniversary is Wednesday. You'd think I would know that too. Right, yeah, you would think, macho man. Um... So at least Saturday I have to take her out, wine her and dine her, and you know whatever else happens after that. But hopefully it's done by the midnight to hour that I can I can watch the pay per view from like midnight until four in the morning or whatever to get her out of the way. So we can bring wow. the show to you on Sunday. Is what I'm saying. It's like Al Bundy going upstairs with Peggy and then turning around and coming back down and saying, well, that'll hold her over. Right? I, we got obligations here. We have to take care of stuff. Why would we want to do it like two weeks later after everybody? We want to talk about it the next day. Bam! Right, you're right. Are we talking about you and Kelly or the pay-per-view? Oh, the bam doesn't happen anymore. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, so now that we wrapped up the show, do you guys have anything else going on this week before we get into our goodbyes? No, I don't. You had something important you wanted to share, though. I Well, I, I wanted you guys to talk about something before we did our, our goodbyes. Neither one I, of you have shit. I, uh, no, I got something. You fucking looked at John. You didn't look at me. I, have you looked what? in the mirror? I wouldn't look at me either. That's an ugly fucking sight. Um... Today is 29 years since one of the founding fathers of bru one of the most brutal tag teams in wrestling passed away. Today shoot or today 
Tomorrow. Today. Today. Okay. <laughs> Saturday K-Fay. night. <laughs> K-Fay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gene Anderson. Oh. Passed away 29 years ago today. That um, long. Wow. He was uh, only, he wasn't even, he was 57 years old. Um, you know, fame with Ole Anderson, uh, you know, the Minnesota, the original and only true Minnesota Wrecking Crew, very brutal, uh, very quiet man, believe it or not, for wrestling, uh, very business, business-like, but, you know, he's one of these ones that underappreciated, obviously, by our generation, because he was mostly over by the time, but he was one of the, you know, if if you want to say one of the top five tag teams of all time with Ole. John's tag teams or? Not John's tag teams. Uh, John's still going on. He, he's like on Thunderfoot and Jay Strongbow as a tag team. Uh, but, you know. Look, 29-year anniversary, one of the uh, greatest tag team wrestlers passed away today. On that note, guys, um, I'm going to leave you with this quote. And uh, you guys have all known, we're, I, I'm very transparent on what's going on in my life and everything. Um, I, I ran across an, a quote this week that is, if you noticed uh, this week, we brought it back. We, we've been a little docile, and it's been my fault. This quote brought it back for me this week. I found it earlier this week, and I want to lead, or end, I should do both, but I'm going to end with this, and then these guys will take us out, as we normally do. So, my quote of this week, if you don't heal from what hurt you, you will bleed on those who didn't cut you. Pretty well said, Mark. Remember, Chad... Just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a trash can, not... Uh, I fucked it up. It's a, a garbage, trash, can. garbage can. Garbage can, not idiot. a garbage cannot. Sorry! People, love you, can crush your nation. I love you guys. Thanks for the support.